Intelligence tests are part and parcel of living in the 21st century. Thought of as pseudoscience by some, and the only accurate measure of worth by others, they have come to dominate in business, school admissions, and public interest worldwide. How many of you have done an official IQ test to get into an institution like Mensa, and how many have completed an online IQ test just out of curiosity? They are everywhere, and whilst this video does not go into which intelligence tests you can trust, it will talk about the birth of them. Alfred Binet is referred to as the father of intelligence testing. Born in France on the 8th of July 1857, Alfred lived a relatively uneventful life, studying physiology at the University of Paris, also known as the Sorbonne. He went on to become a researcher for the Salpetriere Hospital, which specialised in neurology and opened the door to the newly formed discipline of psychology. Despite having no formal education in the subject, Binet kept up to date through psychology texts in the Parisian libraries. After a somewhat tumultuous start to his career involving a scandal around hypnotherapy, Binet was enraptured by Carl Jung's psychological types and proceeded to publish over 200 books, articles and reviews across a breadth of psychological topics. In 1904, a French professional group for child psychology, La Société Libre pour l'étude psychologique de l'enfant, was called upon by the French government to appoint a commission on the education of retarded children. Not a very PC phrase today, but for the time, very standard medical terminology. The commission was asked to create a mechanism for identifying students in need of alternative education. Binet, being an active member of this group, found the impetus for the development of a mental scale. His pioneering work for the French Ministry of Public Education sought to create a way to measure the intelligence of young children so that difficult pupils could be identified, and measures brought in to mitigate anti-social or anti-educational attitudes in those who were currently failing in the existing system of the time. He created, alongside fellow researcher Theodore Simon, a scale known as the Binet-Simon scale that utilised a range of tasks given to children that would compare their mental abilities to a perceived standard denoted by age. This theory of intelligence resulted in a measure which Binet called mental age, a figure that would later form a part of Stern's intelligence quotient, or IQ. Binet hypothesised that mental ability developed over time, and that the rate at which this mental ability developed was relatively consistent, albeit varying based on the individual. He questioned teachers with the most experience available, and created this scale of competence comprising the problems that children could solve based on their age. The rudimentary average was used to determine the average of intelligence that was tied directly to school attainment as well as the biological age of the individual. This information was then utilised within a standardised interview which tested children to determine how closely they stuck to the intelligence guidelines provided by the teachers. The resulting figure, mental age, was represented on a score sheet next to the child's actual age. For example, a child may have a mental age of 12 compared to their actual age of 9, or vice versa. Binet's theories were motivated by a practical problem facing the French educational system of his time, and did help identify children who were failing or likely to fail in future. This was further developed by William Stern into a more user-friendly number by taking the ratio between mental age and biological age and representing it as a percentage called IQ, or the intelligence quotient. Binet's evaluations proved worthwhile in testing child development, however in adults the variation between candidates means that this is a much less accurate measure. IQ has been an influential measure in psychology since its inception. It has gone through many iterations over the years until it reached its current form, not as a quotient at all, but as a performance score relative to peers of the same age. Binet's work laid the grounding for this testing, and was adapted into the Stanford Binet test, which was utilised by the US Army Intellectual Fitness Examinations to test over 1,700,000 candidates during World War I. Further iterations of intelligence testing have continued to be developed, and it is one of the primary methods through which intelligence is studied today. Thank you for watching this brief history of intelligence testing. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, comment, or subscription. If you were truly dazzled by this video, consider donating on Patreon. The link is in the description. Have a great week.